Your Royal Highness, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us today. You've been president of the RYA since 1987, um, so and obviously love sailing and boating. Can you tell us what it is about the sport that's kept you interested for so long? I think sailing is something that you, stays with you forever, to be honest, if you've had, uh, particularly an early introduction, uh, which I had with, with no responsibility, so to speak, and it was just being part of the um, sailing process. But it's something that I think even the evidence, the RYA, people go back to. Uh, partly, I think, because of, the, you know, if you're going to have time away, it is really time away. It gives you a complete change from anything else you're doing. And certainly from my perspective, having a boat up on the west coast of Scotland, two things about that. One is that you, you do get away. And secondly, it is very attractive up there. <laughs> and, you know, the, as they say on the west coast, if you wait half an hour, the weather will change. Yes, yes. And can I, can I ask how old you were when you were introduced you started? To yes. Good question. Don't think I know the answer to that. I mean, I know that um, when we joined the Royal Yacht Britannia, there were usually a dinghy or something on board. But I think, uh, seriously, probably only when um, my father got bloodhound. Yes. Well, I think I was about nine then. And, and you obviously mm. enjoy it. No bad experiences from the start. Oh, plenty. Is... But I mean, in, in that sense, they were all part and parcel of, you know, what you experienced. Exactly. Uh, I don't think I was a particularly good sailor at that stage. <laughs> Character building stuff, as they say. Well, it, it is, it's odd, isn't it? I mean, it's... It, Movement only has to change by very little to either make you feel ill or, or you suddenly feel better. Exactly. Um, yes. And somehow you forget it very quickly. Yeah. yeah. And could you explain why you feel the RYA's role as governing body of recreational boating is, is important? Well, I think RYA is pretty original, actually, in terms of uh, a, a sports body because it, it does <laughs> involve such a wide range of interests and the, and the concept that it is for waterborne activities, apart from the sort of competitive rowing aspect, uh, really is right across the board. And that's, that's a very interesting group of people. And they all have a common interest, I think, in the water on, on which they uh, enjoy themselves. Yes. And that brings them together in a number of different ways, not least of all the interest in sustainability and environment, which is crucial to their enjoyment of what they do in whatever size exactly. um, yes. uh, of boat or indeed power that they choose to enjoy that on. Yes, yeah. And obviously in the early days um, when the RYA was set up it was more to do with the sort of governing body side and the legal side. Um, now we try, well, obviously that's still important mm. to us, but we've also broadened out uh, our, our schemes, getting younger people involved mm. and all that sort of thing. The range of activities from the, uh, you know, the, 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 the fundamental requirement to have a, a national body for sports management in terms of the official sports management is one thing but in to increase it the way we have into in terms of the, the 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 range of activities and the age groups i think has been and you could argue the success of our teams rather shows how successful we've been at generating the enthusiasm um from the youngest upwards and maintaining it and having the structure to so people can go on learning and go on enjoying what they do, they want to do at whatever level they want to do it at. And, and one of those programmes is on board, um, the Arways programme mm. to introduce sailing to children um, and windsurfing to children aged eight and over and hopefully keep them hooked mm. for life. Um, you attended the, uh, an on-board festival in Cowes last yes. year. Um, did you enjoy it? Well, I think, of course, there are, there are some places which are absolutely ideally suited to run the, pro the on-board programme. Uh, and you could say in cows, you know, well, it would be, wouldn't it? But actually, I think uh, UK Selling Academy has set a very good example in terms of approaching groups that might not otherwise uh, try uh, sailing or waterborne activities. And I think on board is, is key to its success, is doing that in places where you don't get natural um, involvement uh, and introducing particularly the educationalists and schools yes. to just how much benefit you can get from sailing. I suppose it touches a bit on the success of sailability too, um, of raising the awareness that it's across all abilities uh, that sailing can make an impact uh, and people can gen really enjoy themselves on, on, on that sort of uh, uh, outing. Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, the age group, eight and above, well, you can start at any age, can't you? And the, the younger, the better. 
And it may not be possible to keep young people right the way through, you know, post-education. But I do think it's something that they come back to because they have enough knowledge and enough understanding. Especially when they've started with, you know, with family. Yeah. You know, they, they've brought up with it and then they go away, do their education, like you yes. say, and then come back to it, hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, with their families as well. So. I mean, to some extent, I think it probably depends on whether they've got involved in a club, you know, whether there's one close enough to them that they enjoy being at that becomes the continuity, you know, the point of uh, where you, you gain that, um, you gain friends, uh, there are activities going on, not necessarily sailing, but so the clubs become really important uh, in, in maintaining that level of interest. You present the RYA Volunteer Awards mm. every year. Um, why do you think the role of the volunteer in sailing is so important? Well, the role, role of the volunteer in, in makes any sport um, sustainable because you know, people can't function without them. No sport can. And it's no different with sailing. There are so many different roles that are played by volunteers, I mean, especially through the clubs. But equally, if you want to, to organise proper regattas and good levels of sailing with real understanding of what is needed in, in terms of courses and all the other the other aspects that are part of that. You need volunteers. They have to be committed and enthusiastic. And to be honest, the best ones are the volunteers because th that is their interest. Yeah, and they're, they're there for no other reason except yeah. they, they want um, to And be. so often they have their own knowledge and experience to fall back on mm -hmm. that uh, they want to, to get involved that way. But there's, there are so many different levels of volunteering within sailing, and, none, and some of that doesn't need to have anything to do with sailing itself. It's all the backup yes, stuff ashore, exactly. yes. which still needs to be done. Yes. I sort of feel that hot water and laundries and drying facilities... <laughs> Equally as important. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, London 2012 is going to be great for Britain and the sport. Um, the Olympic sailing venue at Weymouth and mm. Portland National Sailing Academy has enabled more than 9,000 children, many from underprivileged homes, to experience sailing um, and, and hopes to continue so afterwards. Mm. How much of a legacy do you hope the Games will leave? Well, it's an interesting one for sailing because I think it'll be more visible than usual, um, although Weymouth in itself is not in, a, in London, but I think it, it has the... Up, the potential to bring the sailing to a bigger public. But I think actually the legacy is part of how we organise um, the level of interest and enthusiasm. I think Portland House will be a critical part of that. I and mean, creating the right environment that you can support people who want to get involved. Because you do have to travel. I, not everybody can live beside this and you want to open it up to people who don't necessarily have uh, easy access to sailing conditions. And that Portland House allows us to do that. The Academy allows us to support those too. And maybe the answer is that, you know, we can, as a, an organisation, get that level of support to spread it further afield as well, that we can get that level of support built in into other parts of the country where you can regionalise the support um, to a greater level than we've been able to do in the past. And I understand you're um, hopefully going to be going down to... I hope so. <laughs> For a couple of days? Yeah, no, no, I think uh, I shall certainly manage that. Finally, um, you've been an Olympic competitor. Mm. Um, your daughter Zara, obviously, will be competing. Mm -hmm. do, do you have... No a... obvious about that, I have to say. But <laughs> no, no. She's been there before, not made it, so... <laughs> um, uh, do you have a good luck message for our Team GB sailors? Well, I hope they feel that the uh, Sail for Girl ball was a, a, was a real... Um, a shout of uh, good wishes and good luck, uh, and and I hope they feel that that's across the all the sailing fraternity and all parts of the RYA membership. And I do think that that's you know it's, it's difficult because it is such a broad based organisation, and we have members scattered all over the country, and they all do slightly have slightly different um, levels of enjoyment from different types of activity on the water. Sometimes quite difficult to focus that. Uh, support and, and what it might mean. And I do think that uh, the self Girl Ball does manage to do that. It allows the membership, so to speak, the voice to, to, to wish them good luck. And, I, you know, it is a membership organisation uh, uh, above all else. And it, we have to listen to all those members 
and we have to give opportunities for those members to make their voice heard. And I do think that the the games in, in the UK and having a strong GB team, I think is appreciated by the membership and I hope they will enjoy uh, having a, a strong team and, the, and their successes as well. Uh, certainly from the point of view, I think of those around the council table and as president, you know, you, you really enjoy the moments when you can see it all coming together yes. because the efforts put put in at so many different levels and we are reminded about the quite often the families, the distances they travel in order to keep their children involved. We talk about the support work from the the clubs, which you know the right person at the right time to get keep them interested and help them with the basics. The backup teams from the RYA, from the training teams, from the coaches. It's a big structure, it's a long-term structure, and it's underpinned by the membership of the RYA. And I think they can all be very proud of, of the team. Uh, and I, I'm absolutely no doubt that they would all wish them very good luck indeed. And however good you are, you do need just a bit of that, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And some good weather would help. Thank you again for taking your time to speak to us today. And, and obviously, thank you very much for your continued support to the RYA. Yeah, pleasure.